Welcome back to the southwest of England in a series that hopes to showcase some of the best places to visit and activities to take part in on a Devon and Cornwall holiday. If you're just joining me, hi, I'm Caroline. And so far in this series, I've explored some of the area's culture and heritage from Castle Drogo and Finch Foundry in Dartmoor National Park to the Levant Beam Engine and Batalic's Crown Engine Houses at the foot of Cornwall. I've marvelled in tropical gardens such as Tranguainton and Glen Durgan, potted around towns such as Padstow and St Ives that swell with visitor numbers in the summer, and took advantage of unique ways to visit, either on two wheels via the Camel Trail, or taking in the most spectacular train ride I've been on to date. I've watched a theatre performance at the Minac, hiked a couple of sections of the southwest coast path, and ramped up the adrenaline with a coast steering tour, and again with a jet ski tour. In today's episode, I'll be taking you on a tour around our cute and cosy self-catered shepherd's hut that we've rented here in Cornwall. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and hitting the subscribe button so that you can join me in my Cornwall adventures. Welcome to our tiny home Airbnb Shepherd's Hut that we're staying at here in Cornwall. I wanted to give you guys a tour of it because it is absolutely stunning, but I also wanted to talk about some of the pros and the cons of staying in these sorts of accommodations. So I'll start off with the bedroom area. So this bed has been super cozy and super comfortable and it's been really nice to have breakfast in bed on a morning because they have provided us with a tray, which has been a nice thing just to have out, you know, balancing things like cups of coffee and cereal bowls and at the foot of the bed there is a small but perfectly formed TV and at the moment because the Olympics are going on it's just been a nice routine to start with a bit of breakfast in bed whilst watching the Olympic highlights. Coming out from the bedroom area we've got our front door and one of the things that I really like about this front door is that it's like got one of these latch locks so you can open it almost like horse style or stable style and then opposite the door we have got a rather helpful storage bench but this is where some of the drawbacks of this whole like tiny living and staying in a shepherd's hut starts to kick in whilst yes there's plenty of storage under here it's constantly a case of being having to play you know like there's a kid's picture puzzle where there's one square that's been removed and all of the other ones you can sort of shift around and you try and shift them all around to be able to make the picture perfect again. And I think that's probably the best analogy to a shepherd's hut like this because when you've got all of your belongings with you and all of your luggage and then because we're a little bit self-catered here all of our food as well it's always been this constant juggle of like we've got things out on the seat so then you've got to take them off the seat and put them on the bed so that you can then take off the cushion and then underneath there is your storage. So we've been storing things like bags and our packet cubes with all of our clothes in there where they've kept the tray and a two burner hob or stove again, depending on whether you're American or English, that just plugs into the plugs and we are able to cook really simple things on the hob using that. But that's all under there and you can sort of see how I'm like, I'm faffing a little bit with it and it you know it just it, I guess it takes time to get it back nice looking in this sort of presentable appearance let's say another thing that I love is the fact that they've given us the two plug sockets here but they've got the USB port so it's really nice not having to worry about the plug adapters you can just plug your phone straight in camera batteries as well to get it charged and some really nice artwork on the walls we've got the sheep there we've got the hens and we've also got some pictures of some cows the mugs are uh, things like bunny rabbits and pigs and we've got a cockerel on a teapot as well so it's, it's definitely got a very specific design theme to it and it just runs throughout one thing that I loved was this so welcome to Mulberry Caroline and Andy so the shepherd's hut that we're staying in was listed as the Mulberry shepherd's hut on air B&B so hence welcome to Mulberry and then yeah I guess just when new guests come they, they take out the names and then put in the new ones but I thought that was a really lovely touch. 
This here is like a little breakfast bar area. I have to confess, we have not sat and eaten a single meal at this breakfast bar. It's kind of been like a bit of a dumping ground and also an extension to the kitchen because the kitchen is really, really tiny and I've done plenty of like food prep and salad prep here. Unfortunately, because I have been doing the cooking here, with this window being open obviously to help with things like condensation and steam coming off of the boiling water, the Airbnb owner's cat has definitely smelt it and then the cat's come up and has been meowing at the window trying to beg a little bit for the food and then very helpfully we have also got a very small fridge it's it's nothing fancy but it's enough you know to store things like the butter the milk salad bit of orange juice for breakfast and what have you so that's that's been incredibly helpful i don't know if maybe like a slightly larger one would have been better because there's still a bit of height earlier on in this trip when we were in devon we stayed in a shepherd's hut that was a lot smaller than this one and it didn't have a fridge it only had an ice box and we had to go to a barn elsewhere on the site where they had freezer packs in a freezer and had to go and sort of top that up each day so this one's definitely winning as far as this little fridge goes we do have a sink with a draining board which is nice because again the last shepherd's hut that we stayed in did not have a draining board so it's just been really nice to let that sort of air dry i really like the fact that the mugs are all hanging up there so it's really nice and easy just to be able to take one off for the hot drinks and then the same with your glasses and your wine glasses but then everything underneath so there's three cupboards and then there's two drawers this one's a fake drawer because obviously it's underneath the sink the main area of this one's taken up by the boiler system that helps give us hot water in this tap and also hot water in the shower which i'll show you in just a second this cupboard has got two large dinner size plates, two side plates, and then two bowls all stacked on top of one another. So again, it's like that analogy of that kid's picture where you've got to move around the squares and it's constantly like taking things off to be able to, you know, get out what you need and then putting it all back. Same, there's some pans in there. So two pans. There's a frying pan that never got used whilst we are here. A toaster. We had tea cakes one day after we'd had the big lunch at Rick Stein's fish and chip shops. So yes, we weren't interested in having a big dinner that evening. And that's also in there. So it's yet another thing, you know, that you have to sort of bring out and put out because if you had that out and you had the hob out, there'd just be no space for anything else. And then the final cupboard is just simply a kitchen bin. This one is predominantly your cutlery. And then this drawer has got in it things like cling film and tin foil. There's also your staples like your tin openers and extra bin bags should you need them. There's also a lighter in there, which was helpful for the barbecue outside, which I filmed a little bit earlier on before we lost the daylight. So that will be coming up in just a moment. But before I do take you guys outside, I will show you guys what is Susie's door, which is the bathroom. When we first arrived, I think I was quite needing to go and use the toilet and so I came in, didn't bother reading any of the manuals or welcome notes and I couldn't work out for the life of me where the light switch was and we don't have a window in here and eventually Andy let me know that this very small light up here had a little pull on it. And when we first arrived, these towels were beautifully all rolled up and like lovely and presentable on the bed, but naturally we can't do that after we've showered. We need to hang them up. And whilst it would have been okay to use the clothesline outside, had it been nice and warm at the moment, it was anything but that. So we've just got them hanging up here at the moment to, to be able to dry. This really is the depth of the bathroom. And it's just a little bit longer than and the span of my arms. On this side of me, we've got a toilet. Now, it is technically speaking a regular toilet in the sense that it's fully flushing and there's nothing fancy that you need to do. It's not like a chemical toilet or a, like a composting toilet. But one of the really cool things that it does have that I think is ingenious for how tiny this space is, is the cistern at the top is a sink. So to get water out of the tap, when you flush the toilet, the toilet has fed into it clean water. And so when you flush, you then have the running water out of the tap to be able to wash your hands. So very, very environmentally friendly, as well as excellently space saving. They've also popped on the door a little toilet roll. Clever, given the, the small space, but I have found that that toilet paper has gotten just a little bit damp from time to time because of the damp towels. On this size, we've got what is, in my opinion, I think a really 
good sized shower given the tiny space. I have seen on some Airbnb listings where the shower is kind of like part of the toilet, so the water kind of goes all over the sink and the toilet as well, but this is completely separate with a separate shower. And again, just keeping with that sort of farmyard animals, we've got the bees on there and the shower's been wonderful, very hot excellent pressure, probably the best pressure that we've had all trip. In comparison to the shepherd's hut that we stayed at in Devon, it didn't have an interior bathroom and so the shower was outside and thankfully the weather played ball whilst we were there. It's been really nice not having to put on clothes and things to be able to run out to use the composting loo which is what we had in Devon as well. It's just a case of coming through here so I think it does take that glamping to the next level again. This Shepherd's Hut is in a place called, I believe it's pronounced Nanstalon, and it's just outside of Bodmin, probably like five, ten minute drive. And that's given us excellent access to Bodmin on our first day, which is where we went to go and hire bikes to cycle the Camel Trail down to Padstow, where we were able to eat the Rick Signs fish and chips and have a mosey around real quick before cycling back. On our second day, we then drove for about 30 minutes to a place called Carlion Bay and that is a privately owned beach and the company that owns it run jet ski tours so we went out on a jet ski tour and then they had lots of food truck eateries so we had pizza and then we just kind of lazed on the beach in the afternoon. Today we went over to the north coast and we went to St Necton's Glen and did a waterfall walk and that took about 35 minutes to get there and then tomorrow we're planning on going back across to the north coast again and we're going to be doing a hike along the southwest coastal path from and I still need to get my head around how you pronounce it something like tinned Tagel. We're going to get a bus up to Boz Castle and then we're going to walk back along the Southwest Coastal Path. And that is a fraction of some of the things that it can offer. There's a National Trust property, Land Hydro. You've got the Bodmin Jail, the steam railway that goes from Bodmin. Oh, Newquay is really not too far from here either. There's the National Trust bed, Ruth and Steps. I really had to whittle it down and choose what it was that I wanted to do while staying here because this is in such a fabulous location for so many different activities and sights to see. The exterior of the Shepherd's Hut is probably just about as important as the interior because it is the outside space that helps to make up for the fact that the interior is that tiny home. Out here our Airbnb hosts have put out a bird feeder and then there's also a bird bath over there. The big window that is at the end of the shepherd's hut with the bed on it overlooks this section of it so it's been really nice on a morning just having a bit of a lazy morning in bed, drinking a cup of coffee, eating my breakfast and just looking out of the window at all of the different birds that have been congregating in this area. There was one morning where the cat was on the porch to our shepherd's hut and I was wondering because it scared away all of the birds but the birds all seemed happy enough and thankfully the cat didn't quite go for any of them. And then as we come around in our little private garden that we've got, the really barbecue has been quite a rainy day today so we've obviously covered it all back up but one of the days that we were here is a really nice beachy day. We did go to the supermarket and buy some like burgers and sausages to make on the barbecue. There's a shed, it's not part of the Airbnb listing, but it is helping to keep up a washing line and inside of the Shepherd's Hut, our Airbnb house of letters with a really big basket full of clothes pegs. So again, had the weather just been a little bit more favorable, it would have been a nice place to hang out things like swimsuits after a beach day, also like our towels and things from when we've showered. The washing line is then linked up to a fence and that fence is really nice because it just gives a little bit of privacy. On the other side of the fence is then the Airbnb host's home. So when we have been sat out here enjoying the garden, particularly enjoying the barbecue, it's not like we've had to feel like we've had eyes watching us. It really is a lovely private space. We've also been provided with this beautiful outdoor table and chairs set again. We've sort of tipped them up so that the, the rainwater hasn't collected on the chairs, but really high quality. I think probably better than what we've got as our garden furniture at home. And that's just been, again, a really nice alternative space to be able to eat our meals on. And then on the other side of the fence is where we've been able to park our car, which has been lovely. So offloading all of our luggage and what have you has just been really really simple. So our host left in a note asking 
that we make sure that we always close the gate, whether it's that we've parked the car inside or if we've gone out for the day. And they said the reason for that being is that the farmers will sometimes move their cattle from fields to fields. And naturally what we don't want is for cows to then meander on into the garden. We haven't seen any cattle here. When we were in Devon though, we did get stuck behind uh, a load of farmers who were moving the cattle, which was very cool to watch on with. But what we have seen here is a tractor came down the road here and it then turned around and came up here, had a massive trailer on the back with hay. And the hay has just been stashed up behind the house here. Living in London, coming from a really big city, it's just really cool to be able to see firsthand. The farmers obviously really hard at work. That happened yesterday when it was the glorious sunshine shine day and it was probably happening at about eight o'clock in the evening and I think it's just because they were trying to get as much work done as possible before the horrible rains and winds kicked up today but it's just it's really nice to be able to sit and experience or watch on the experience firsthand. If you are interested in staying in this place, what I'll do is in the comments below, I will leave a link and I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Would you be happy staying in a shepherd's hut like this? Would you be put off by how small it is and how you're always having to move things around? Or is this the sort of holiday vacation accommodation that you would love to stay in? Please do let me know in the comments below.